Yeah, so I was too old and she was too young, and that's the way that it uh, that's the way that it came across. But as we talked, um, somehow everybody that agrees with uh, with our relationship, um, as if as if we need anybody's agreement, we do. Nobody, you don't need anybody's agreement, but it, it does help. It does help. It means that you have less stress on the relationship from people who are outside of the relationship. And that is brothers, sisters, brothers-in-law, sisters-in-law, uh, mothers-in-law, fathers-in-law. And um, it helps if they are with you. So that's the, that's the thing that is to be borne in mind there. Now, I had a life in music. I was a musician uh, pretty well most of my life. Uh, later, the last uh, 20 years or so, I changed. 25 years maybe, I began to do. Uh, I began to do uh, contracting. I did some contracting work in the U.S. and in the U.K. before I left and went to the U.S. 1992, I went to the U.S. Uh, and I stayed there. I don't know why it never quite worked for me in the U.S. Um, even though I did, um, well, let me say, but here's, here's another one of those ironic things. All my musical life, I thought, wow, if only I could get to America. America was where all of my heroes were. All of the great trombone players, all of the great singers, all of, all of that was all in America. Uh, and I wasn't. So finally, 1992, I went to America. In order to get there, I went with no money. In order to get there, I sold my trombone. <laughs> so, so funny. All those years, I'd wished that I could play with people that I had uh, hero worshipped all that time. And uh, then that's what happened. So, we, um, Beth and I met up and I'd fled from the US. I got to that point where there was a crash in the real estate market and uh, a lot of people, many people in the US, as much as it is regarded as being such a wealthy place, Many people are only three paychecks away from being evicted. So it's not all paradise. So I came, I came to the Philippines and I met by a chain of circumstances of this person knowing that person and uh, both of us having our photos on a way uh, a dating site, um, we met. Um, and we met on the last night that I was to be in Cebu. And that last night that I was there was the day of the earthquake. So I think, I think that was somewhere around 2013. And we'd exchanged a few texts and liked what what we had read and um, so we arranged to meet and we arranged to meet because it was following the earthquake and it was all about these uh, these aftershocks and, and so we met amid the aftershocks enough we felt enough of uh, of a harmony between us, enough chemistry, in spite of the age thing, and and the fact that I wasn't, I wasn't wealthy, not not by any means at all, could I even be considered um, broke. I said at the time, some a friend of mine liked that. So, oh, I liked what you said um, that you'd have to save up to be broke. We made it to Bohol. 
it took us about three months to get married I think it was because um, they're not very clear when you get married in the Philippines and you might go to a government office and you can be in line waiting and you can wait and an entire day can be lost just getting one signature or uh, showing them one piece of uh, documentation and then they send you away and they send you away for another piece of documentation let's say that it's um, the AB123 so you say okay so if we come back in a couple of days with the AB123 that's all that you need yes and the person that you're talking to then says absolutely just bring the AB123 and we're good to go we arrived back a couple of days later with the AB123 and the person looks at them a different person looks at the documentation now um, oh you've got the AB123 that's good uh, did you get the AB1234 uh, nothing was mentioned about the four ah well that's what you need now if we come back with the AB1234 is that all that we need and so it goes so then you have to find a judge who can fit you into his schedule and we found a sleepy judge who, who did and we do have some photographs of that anyway we got married and we came to Cebu I had already met her mom her mom wanted to know what the plan was and uh, I had to give her the plan the, the plan is that um, that Beth and I will will get married and we did and we've been married now for almost eight years has it been plain sailing no it hasn't and I don't believe anyone who says that marriage is plain sailing now I do I do have one exception to to that in that I really did believe them and that was we were asked out of the blue we actually don't just to let you know we, we actually don't mix with a lot of expats and their wives um, we're just so fully engrossed and committed in what we do between doing videos for the channel um, and doing the work that we do to help we don't have a lot of time for any kind of socializing so we really don't know that many people uh, people ladies lovely ladies often write to me and say could you you know you must have lots of uh, foreigner friends could you fix me up first of all we're not a dating site um, and the other is, that, no, uh, I don't have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of foreigner friends. Just a couple. I meet with Michael and uh, he is really about the only foreigner friend that I actually make an effort to spend time with. So, we came over and we had lost our pension the pension from the US had been stopped because I didn't get the letter back confirming that I'm still alive the life certificate so it was stopped and it took about three or four months to get that reinstated which it does so we had a difficult time we um, we had uh, times when uh, we were living we were living with ne uh, Beth's mom in the house that Beth grew up in um, it was right about the time that uh, let me see who was uh, Aquino Aquino was the president and he had managed to bring in some kind of legislation that got electricity out to some out-of-the-way places so 
we just got Nanai had just got electricity put into her house like a month or two months before we arrived uh, and we'd helped with the expenses on that for as little as we had and then we came over uh, with very little and uh, we decided after a very short time that we really needed a place of our own so we decided that we would start building and that's how the, the Red House was started. Now when it was the Red House Beth was spending quality time with her mom, which she hadn't been able to do since she was like 14 and it was different for Beth she she was able to she was able to spend that kind of time that is to be envied uh, most of us are, are, in my experience has been that we would do anything for even one hour with my for me, with my mother and father, to have just one hour with them where I could apologise for, for not being a good son and, uh, and really just tell them that I love them. Beth got that time with her mother and still has that time with her mother. So this is a great thing. And even though my mother-in-law is younger than I am, I still take it as a time for me to be um, a retro better son. So we went through difficult times then, uh, very little money, um, having to rely. We obviously Beth had uh, a wedding ring. I had this ring that I have now which, which is never off my finger um, but I think that this <laughs> this costs about three or four hundred pesos which is under ten dollars um, just one above a piece of string <laughs> so but her her ring was worth some money so we've pawned that ring many many times believe me uh, when we finally were able to get a motorcycle, we uh, we would go to Taliban hoping that my pension had come in so that we would have the money to get home. And if we didn't have the money for gas to get home, we used to pawn the ring and that was uh, a regular a regular thing. So, all of that was uh, really something, a big experience for me because I was a foreigner living in the Philippines and um, I hadn't experienced this particular kind of way of living. Um, but uh, with Beth, it was fun. So I didn't have any complaints. It was fun. And I knew, somehow I knew it would get better. Well, I tried... I had tried when I was in uh, when I was in Florida. I tried to set up uh, a vlog, and and I actually did start a channel. There's a lot of um, uh, fake news about me starting or us starting a channel. Uh, that somebody here, uh, a neighbour who shall be nameless, um, helped us. To start a channel. No, but it's actually the other way around. Um, I'd already had a channel, just never really worked it. But you can find parts of that channel um, on YouTube. You can put my name in, and uh, and you'll find you'll find Terence Flannery in uh, the sh at the Shine Hall in concert at the Shine Hall. It, it was early. It was back when I was in Florida. So, so the help that I needed was uh, really how to switch the, the computer on, uh, not not anything about setting up uh, a channel. In fact, I still have some CDs somewhere. Uh, the workers are coming back. Um, 
about how uh, I was given some CDs uh, by that neighbour. Uh, could you have a look at those and tell me what you think? And um, yeah, and I did, and it wasn't it wasn't good. So it works because we allow each other some space, and that that is it. We made an agreement which has been very difficult to keep sometimes that we would never close our eyes and sleep on an argument that's been a hard one um, but we've never we've never slept in another bed you can work that out in all ways in somebody else's bed okay but we've never gone off and slept on the couch we've never we've Whenever that has seemed like it was imminent, one of us has said, remember, remember what we said, and this is not going to go the right way. And that would bring us back together. So even if we didn't agree, it would be skin on skin, bumping up against each other during the night, and we would not be taking ourselves off and living in another space. And I think that that was important too. Eh, I gotta go now. That's enough. One waffling and wandering.